Anonymizers for mobile, you have Orbot, Siphon, and Open Door. Again, there's a million of them. And you can see that little onion head over there on the Orbot. So that's going to be like a Tor browser. You want to be careful with those. Spoofing IP addresses. IP spoofing refers to changing source IP address so that the attack appears to be coming from someone else. So you're going to send a packet, but you won't be able to get that packet back, right? Because it's going to go back to the victim, the, the spoofed IP address. When the victim replies to the address, it goes back to the spoofed address and not to the attacker's real address, right? That's what we just said. So you start kind of trying to cause a DOS attempt, but you're using another person's address. Well, then they get all of the bouncing traffic or attack traffic, whatever it is they're going to put out there. So IP spoofing using HPing2. So you'll see a lab on this. HPing2, www.something.com, A, 7.7.7.7. Now you would be able to complete a three-way handshake and open a successful TP connect, TCP connection with a spoofed IP address. So IP spoofing detection techniques. So how do we detect IP spoofing? We use direct TTL probes, time to live probes. So you send a packet um, to the host as a su suspected spoof packet that triggers a reply and compare the two TTLs. They should take approximately the same amount of time. So if you've got a guy in China that's connecting to you, you can see the TTLs, like you can do a ping. And then you can see what the TTLs are looking like when they're coming in, the connections, the communication that's coming in. They should be close to each other. If they're not, then that's a problem. This technique is successful when the attacker is in a different subnet from the victim. So it's also effective different subnets and different areas. It's very effective. This was uh, discovered by a young person and the government used it. He saved the day for a big worm attack they had trying to figure out where the worms are really coming from because they were using a lot of spoofing. So it was pretty ingenious at the time. I think the kid was 15 at the time and his dad worked for the uh, Pentagon. So that's how the Pentagon, I believe it was Code Red or, um, or uh, mm, that other big worm that went around. I can't think of it off the top of my head. It'll come to me in a minute. So IP spoofing detection techniques, IP identification number. Uh, send a probe to a host of suspect spoof traffic that triggers a reply and compare the IPIDs with the suspect traffic. So here's another way. IP identification number, so you can kind of look at the IPIDs and see if they're even close. If the IPIDs are not in the near value of the packet being checked, suspect traffic is spoofed. They should be close. If one comes in at 5 and then 20 and then 50 and you're, you're getting um, talking to that same server and the IPIDs are coming back as 60 million, well then those aren't even close, right? So the IPIDs uh, should be very similar. So send a probe to the host of the sus suspect spoof traffic that triggers a reply and compare the IPID. So talk to the same machine, the IPID should be in the same ballpark. IP spoofing detection techniques, TCP flow control method. So here's another method. Attackers sending spoofed TCP packets will not receive the target SYN ACK packets. So attackers sending spoofed TCP packets will not receive the target SYN and ACK packets. Remember, these are not two packets. It's just one packet with the SYN and the ACK flag set. We do SYN, we get a SYN ACK back, and then we send them an ACK, right? So we send them a SYN, and then we won't get the SYN ACK back. Um, attackers cannot, therefore, be responsive to changes in the congestion window size. So attackers cannot therefore be responsive to changes in the congestion window size. The congestion window size is a TCP IP packet thing. So if you want to learn about that, you can go read up on it. Uh, we can't really cover all the history of the stuff and the background. So when received, tra uh, when received traffic continues after a window size is exhausted, most probably the packets are spoofed. So that's how you can, that's another way to tell. So it's really detailed stuff that you're looking at here. And then here are some countermeasures encrypt all network traffic using cryptographic network protocols such as IPsec, TLS, SSH, and HTTPS. Notice nowhere in here do you see SSL anymore. They finally updated the slides. We want to use multiple firewalls providing multi-layer uh, depths of protection. Do not rely on IP-based authentication. Use random initial sequence numbers. Remember we talked about that. Almost everything does this automatically anyway today. 
to prevent IP spoofing attacks based on sequence number spoofing. So that's how you prevent them from guessing your uh, sequence numbers or IPIDs and they're just randomly started. So if I start a connection now, it starts at 50. If I start another connection, it might start at 6,000 instead of 55, right? So you can't guess what it's gonna be every time by making a connection to my, my server. And then ingress filtering. You must use routers and firewalls on your network perimeter to filter incoming packets that appear to be coming from an internal IP address. So if it says it's coming from a LAN address and it's trying to come into the network, that doesn't make any sense, right? So that's all they're saying, just ingress filtering. Egress filtering, traffic going out. Ingress is traffic coming in. Egress is traffic going out. So filter out going packets with, all, uh, with an invalid local IP address as a source address. So if the IP address is not correct, drop the packets. Mm -hmm.